Good morning, brethren, sisters, Church of the Living God. Hello. Water with chia seeds. Very tasty. No, not really, but <laughs> uh, there's no taste, but very good, very healthy for you. Ah. A bit, big pardon. Just got out of the shower. It takes a little a while for the beard to dry. Um, it is 5.29 a.m. here my time. Yesterday was a pretty rough day. <laughs> um, the day prior, I got no sleep at all. But yesterday, the Lord blessed me with sleep. Uh, praise the Lord. He gave me rest. And I was able to get, well, roughly around 11 to 12 hours of sleep yesterday. Um, praise the Lord for it. And um, also had the opportunity to have some fellowship with a beloved brother. A friend, a true friend, that I've actually have known longer than most, uh, well over a year, I think, even. Well over a year. Well over a year. Um, maybe even two years. Maybe two years. Maybe two. Um, a brother, a friend who has been with us from the beginning. I was able to have some fellowship with him, and um, yeah, it was... Even though it was a rough day yesterday, it turned out to be a beautiful day. Slept most of it. <laughs> but, um, and also to, again, thank you to all of you, those true brothers and sisters, true brethren of the Church of the Living God. Thank you. You know who you are. Thank you. Well, you know... Not everyone who works for the Vatican or the Jesuits is a Jesuit. <gasps> That's simply the case. Um, not everyone who works for the Jesuit is not a Jesuit. That is true. Now, when I say Jesuit, especially for today at the time that we live in right now, when you say Jesuit... You are actually encompassing all of Catholicism. Not every Catholic is a Jesuit, but you have to remember who is ruling Catholicism today. Okay, Francis, the white pope, is a Jesuit. And according to the Jesuits' own doctrine, the Jesuit is to see the superior general as God. So what does that mean? That means Pope Francis... <clears throat> excuse me. Pope Francis is subservient unto the black Pope Arturo Sosa, who rules all of Catholicism. So when I say to you, Jesuit, I am encompassing all of what is Catholicism today. Because when you say Catholic, you might as well say Jesuit, even though a majority of the Catholics, are, they have no idea. Okay? But, um, again... Not everyone who works for the Vatican, Catholicism, the Jesuit order, is a Jesuit or even a Catholic. I'll give you a very perfect example of what I'm talking about. Stephen Anderson. Stephen Anderson. I personally do not believe that Stephen Anderson is actually a Jesuit. <laughs> but he sure is working for him. You might say, well, how so, Brad? Well, let's... Let's see. Number one, he denies the Holocaust. Number two, he hates the Jews. Okay. Number three, he is non-dispensational. He will not rightly divide the word of truth. Um, uh, number four, um, it's faith alone from Genesis on to Revelation. Okay. Did I mention that he hates the Jews? Okay. Um, you're saved by faith only. Um, homosexuals, as it is called today, sodomites cannot be saved. Um, and there, oh, there's so many more. <laughs> um, Stephen Anderson, even though he preaches from the authorized version of the scriptures, um, he is not of the Church of the Living God. He is a coadjutor working for the Vatican. How? When you deny the Holocaust, and he hates the Jews, um, you're taking the blame away 
from where the blame ought to be on Catholicism, on the Jesuits, okay? Amen. It was Rome that was responsible for the uh, Holocaust. And they used Germany as their puppeteer, while they themselves were the puppeteer playing the puppets, okay? So, you see, there are those out there who can work for the Vatican, do their bidding, and not be a Catholic or Jesuit at all. They might have uh, experience with former cults, but um, they're not Catholic. They're not Jesuits. But they work for the Vatican. How? As coadjutors. A lot of you might be saying, oh, Brad, that's just conspiratorial. You, you're paranoid, right? You're paranoid, right? Uh, <laughs> Going to be sharing with you several things that I've shared with you before, but in light of current events, um, who really are the fake ones? Mm -hmm. I wonder. I'm going to share with you a little from um, a book by James Aitken Wilde. Okay? If you can find anything by this man, uh, that's his name. I've read out of this before. Um, this man did a three-part volume on the history of Christendom, I think it was called. But um, when it came to exposing the Jesuits, uh, if you can get this book, it's still in print. This is the book. Go ahead and get it. Go ahead and get it. A while ago, over a year ago, a, a dear friend of mine from Blackpool, England, taught me a very valuable lesson. But see, my problem is I tend to be, still to this day, I am naive. I am naive. And that naivety on my, be on my behalf has cost me yet again. <laughs> but now I'm on to it. And shame on me. Shame on me. I'm going to share a little something with you because there are those of you It's like, well, Fred, you're being paranoid. The Jesuits and those who work for the Vatican, they're just in the big, big time. You know, they're not the guys at the gas station pumping your gas or, or doing whatever. It's not the little guys. They're only... Uh, uh. I'm going to share with you something from this and I'm also going to share with you some things we've already gone over from Alberto's testimony and also from this, okay? But it's very meat. And brethren, <laughs> we do have to be on our guard against wolves who are sent to sow discord using Jesuit tactics. When you say a man's name, you can see their visage change. A couple of stinking devils. Yeah. Who's really the fake one, son, buddy boy? Hey there, woman. Huh? Yeah. Anyway, I'm going to be reading on this page right here. We're right here, okay? Right here. Hey, pause this and read this. Okay? Right here. Okay? And I'm also going to be reading the entire highlighted section, okay? A man that is an heretic after the first and second admonition <sighs> reject. man that is an heretic, after the first and second admonition, reject. Ti uh, Titus chapter 3, verses 9 and 10, uh, 9 on to verse 11. But avoid foolish questions and genealogies and contentions and strivings about the law, for they are unprofitable and vain. A man that is an heretic after the first and second admonition reject, knowing that he that is such is subverted and sinneth, 
being condemned of himself and also working for the Vatican. And I just added that. But anyway, let's get back to this, shall we? Let's get back to this. If I really want to see these people get worked up, say one man's name. See them go from day to night just like that. Quoting verbatim. They must acquire all knowledge of all trades and handcraft, handicrafts. They must study sciences and arts. They must speak all languages. We do not mean that this vast range of accomplishments and capability was exacted on the part of each individual Jesuit, but only on the part of the order. It must be in itself an epitome of society. The order must be able to send forth men for all departments of life. From the plow, you know, a plow, someone in the field, okay? For the loom, for the factory, someone working in a factory. See, the little people, okay? Not just the upper echelons, little people, okay? For the bourse, for the school, which here in America, especially, every school is overrun with the Jesuits, okay? For the bench of justice, same thing, our government is Jesuit controlled, Jesuit rule, ruled, Jesuit, uh, Jesuit run, okay? For the army, again, I've speak to, I've spoken to Marines who have, uh, when they have uh, made me aware of that, yes, the training for the Marines is very similar to the spiritual exercises of Ignatius de Loyola. And last of all, he mentions, for the church, last of all. See, it's a pyramid of thing. It starts from the bottom and works itself up to the top. Okay? Remember, the pyramid structure works two ways. It bleeds down from the top, but it also, from the wider base, works up to the top, that the top be overrun with the stuff that comes from the bottom. Okay? Its members must wear an infinity of shapes, play an infinity of parts, and disperse themselves so widely among professional pursuits as to make it impossible to believe that they were all moving on one point and obeying one head. It's impossible to believe, right? You better be aware of this, brethren. As it has happened unto me, I pray it doesn't happen unto you. I pray it doesn't happen unto you. Because those of the Church of the Living God, um, you can have disagreements with those who are saved, born again, converted of the Church of the Living God, a new creature. Um, you can have vehement disagreements with them, but you, you, know, you cut them off and leave them alone. But see, those who are sent to cause division within the body of Christ, they don't not only turn on you personally, but they go after those whom you trust to try to turn them against you too. Very slick, you wicked little devils. Very slick, very slick. If it walks like a duck, quacks like a duck, it is a duck. Why are you using Jesuit tactics there, buddy boy? Oh, but you, you don't hate people, right? Say one man's name. Oh, now, say two people's names. See their, see their visage change and see the hatred just come out of them. A couple of lion thieves. Some were to counsel kings. Others were to guide the consciences of ministers of state. Others to lead armies. Others to declaim in parliaments. And others to harnage at county fairs. Among the little people. See, now the order here was from the top to the bottom. Well, as we looked at earlier, it was from the bottom to the top. Meaning from the plow onto the church, you know. Uh-huh. They were to preach all theologies. Lutheranism, 
and Lutherans are Catholics today. <laughs> uh, they, they, they are. I don't think they ever left. Calvinism, Arminianism, Anabaptism. They were to be Mohammedan, dervishes, Indian fakers, and Chinese pundits. By these counterfeits, they would open their way into all circles and into all countries and be able to mold and guide opinion. Being so sweet and innocent and harmless. And yet the quarter from which the inspiration came should not be known. Guess what? I think I know. Their mission, on which all their efforts were made to concrete to concentrate, was to quench the liberties of the new age, corrupt the churches of the reformed faith, undermine the thrones of disobedient kings, convulse non-Catholic nations, in short, to break down the world and having broken it down, to build it up again and to assume the government of it, to rule the world by the volition of a single man. Today, that man, of course, is Arturo Sosa. But coming soon, that man of sin, the son of perdition. Now I'm going to read something to you from this. The Jesuits. Okay? Just, uh, like I said, not everybody is a Jesuit or even a Catholic who works for the Vatican. They're not. Stephen Anderson, I don't think he's a Jesuit. But he sure is working for the Vatican. And he's doing really good, isn't he? Isn't he? Because remember, the Vatican has really deep pockets. I'm going to be sharing with you this. Okay, uh, if you can see this. Ah, yeah. Pause that, get a screenshot, zoom in, and read it. This page right here. So I'm going to be reading with you. Okay? Okay, on the next 10 to 14 years, an intensive weeding out process takes place. Candidates are regularly tested and placed in different groups and levels. First class, the professed. These are priests with SJ, Society of Jesus, after their names, if they want to be known. Only a few of the Jesuits make it to this class. This means that the vast majority of Jesuits are not priests. See, these are the guys who they put up front to make it look like they're all holy while they do dirty work. Uh, the Jesuit order was disbanded for about 41 years, I believe it was. What year it is, I don't really remember. But see, even then, they worked through front groups like the Masons that belong to the Jesuits. A lot of front groups, facades, okay? While the Jesuits are back here playing them like a marionette. They take four vows, obedience, poverty, chastity, and special obedience to the Pope. Second class, the formed coadjutors. There are two kinds. Spiritual coadjutors, these are lesser priests who can only hear confessions, preach, and teach. Temporal coadjutors. Temporal, spiritual and temporal, okay? The two swords of, of the Vatican, okay? You see uh, pictures of the Catholic Jesus doing this? Spiritual and temporal, the two swords of the Vatican, okay? They believe that they have spiritual power to put you in hell and temporal power to rule the governments, okay? So a temporal coadjutor is what? These are at the bottom of the barrel, with no spiritual authority whatsoever. They work as cooks, gardeners, etc. As long as they live for the greater glory of God. See, spiritual, the ones who work in the religious field, and the temporal, who work for the Vatican, but just do everyday kind of thing. Oh, like in trades, 
carpenters, electricians, that kind of thing. Very lucrative, isn't it? Third class, approved scholastics. This is a student who promises to lay his future in the hands of his superior. And there's a little picture here. It's like here. here. Get a load of these pictures, especially the ones of the coadjutors. Look at that. Especially right here. Clean out of the toilet. See, the Jesuits people, you need to get this in your heads. The Jesuits and those who work for Catholicism, the Jesuit order, they don't just stay up here. They want to rule everybody. Okay? Remember, the pyramid structure. Okay? Stuff from the bottom floats its way up top, and the top is so small, but it's overrun by the stuff that comes from the bottom. It starts from the top and bleeds down to the bottom. Okay? Remember that. Okay? Okay, these, this is the third class. This is a student who promises to lay his future in the hands of his superior, who will decide after 10, after his 10 to 14 years of study, where he will end up in the system, whether he become a Jesuit, priest, or a janitor. He trusts that his superior speaks for God. Eh. <laughs> who is your God? You say of the scriptures. Something's off, huh? <laughs> yeah, buddy. Yeah. Had I known what I know right now, I wouldn't have touched you guys with a 10-foot pole. Fourth class. Still indifferent. It has not been decided where these people belong. They too must trust their superior as God and wait up to 14 years for his decision. Their goal is an elite team of the most dedicated men in the world who will do anything for their Jesuit general without thought or hesitation. The Jesuit goal is to make the world serve the Pope by hook or by crook. Okay? And remember, these temporal coadjutors who work for the Vatican... They will stay dormant for a long time until they get the word from the top of the pyramid while they themselves are on the bottom. Uh, they'll get their, the word from the top of the pyramid, goes down to them, and then they'll spring to action. In about, oh, five, maybe six month time. Yeah. Yeah. It makes sense now. It makes sense now. All makes sense. It all makes sense. Here's their tactics. Here's what they do. Here's what they do. I should have known. I should have known. At least with my good friend from Blackpool, it took what? Maybe two years until it finally came out? took him two years for him to finally come out that he was a lost devil. Less than a year. Hmm. Here are some of their tactics. Uh, I've read this to you before, but we're going over it again. You people need to understand this with the climate of the world that we are in right now. You're here in America. You can't trust anybody. There are very few people I trust now. Very few. Very few. Let me see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I trust, truly trust, about seven people. Truly trust seven people. It used to be nine. Here, this is what I'm going to be reading you. This whole page here of Alberto's testimony. Take a screenshot, zoom in, and read it. Before you get into that, Alberto, is there a set plan for destroying a strong man of God who will not compromise given? Yes. Here are three of the most important ways. Discredit him 
isolate him, death by various means. Isolate, to be left alone without any friends or support. <laughs> oh, you wicked devils. I hope my God, my Father, Lord Jesus Christ, whom I serve, expose you to wicked devils for who you really are. Here, let me let me light a little fire underneath your butt. Let me say this. Brian Denlinger! Oh. Yeah, see your face go from uh, day to night. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, well, here, let me say another name for you. So your hatred, your, your blood vessels break in your face. Brad Avenshine. Yeah. Should have seen it. Should have seen it. Number one. Destroy his reputation by lying about him. Coming up with nonsensical things. Nonsense. <laughs> Twisting something he said making him look like an enemy of the country to get him in trouble with the officials or frame him with a woman. She could be planted as his secretary to have an affair with him. Once we had a pastor call to a home, to a home late at night. On the way, we had a woman in distress on the side of the road. He stopped to help. She screamed, Rape! Tore her dress and her partner photographed them, destroying the pastor. Government agencies and police investigate him because he was accused of anything from pushing drugs to income tax evasion. When he proves his innocence, it's too late. The news media has already made him look guilty. Go and see, that's a thing. See, that's what you two devils are doing. You're sent in to infiltrate. You know, love bombing. Oh, we love you. Even helping. And then all of a sudden, oh, we just see something off. We don't hate him, but there's something off about him. <laughs> and like, we'll look in the scriptures about you types of people who are looking for the aha because you're working for the Vatican. Oh, a conspiracy? Well, Oh, paranoid? Brethren, it happens. Especially when someone is known by the Jesuits and has been threatened by them before. I don't believe in coincidence. Let's continue this. His credit can be messed up, like through credit cards. Everybody is told by him. Everybody is told but him putting him in a mess. Later they apologize for the mix-up. When it's too late, all this is to make him look bad. Secret phone calls accusing his wife or her children of obscene acts. These are only a few things to make him look bad. By now he is considered unreliable and branded a liar and a thief. Number two. And this is what you two are doing, as many have been done before you. A letter write, writing or whispering campaign gets started saying he is too controversial. He is a troublemaker. The, those opposing his stand call him an enemy causing division. He's against unity. He's not, showing God, he's not showing God's love. He has his own strange doctrines or beliefs. He is left alone without pastor friends. A new lie is spread saying he had a nervous breakdown. So everything he says is unreliable. My, my, my good friend from Blackpool even tried to do that one. <laughs> Most of them give in and compromise. It is easier than facing the heat. Isolation is used to force them out of ministry. Bring it on. I'll take the heat. This is what the Lord has called me to do. The Lord has called me to do. 
And if this, the old saying is, if you can't stand the heat, get out of the kitchen. Well, the Lord is the one who's going to have to get me out of the kitchen because I ain't going unless he says otherwise. Number three, death, the last resort. When he believes he has a call from God and will not compromise under all this pressure from other pastors, friends with a question mark, <laughs> and family, then strange things happen. He is hit by a car. He, he is hit by a car in an accident. He goes to the hospital. Some nurse pulls the plug on his oxygen, and there is a mix-up in medicine. Or there is a mix-up in medicine. Excuse me. He gets complications and dies. He can die of food poisoning or be fed mind-changing drugs, putting him in a mental institution. He can have a mysterious fight with a stranger who knives him in the dark, or a contract is placed on him by assassination by a bullet. As you can see, brethren, we are at war. We are at war. Here's a note. One deadly technique is to produce a double who looks like the victim. Supplied with identification papers using his name, he deliberately lives a wicked life, forging papers, ruining his credit, and destroys his reputation. That could be done in someone's uh, identity theft, cyberware, malware, that kind of thing. Okay? That can be done in that kind of thing. And incidentally, there is someone out there um, not of my nation, who has information like that on me. Um, you do anything like that, I will name you and do, I will name you, I will name you in a video and make sure that the entire body of Christ uh, beware of you. I'm sorry I have to say that. But I don't trust you. So, what else do these people do? Get your authorized version of the scriptures. Now this happened twice now in one month. I don't believe in coincidences. I do not believe in coincidences. One One I believe is was is a brother. A brother who is under great duress. I, I have to give him that. Um, who made some really insane accusations. And wanted to bring me into a, a problem that he had with another brother. When he himself and uh, this brother should have been a couple of grown-ups. One was willing to do it. One was willing to do it. The other was not. When two should have gotten together face to face and been a couple of men about it. One was willing to be a man about it. The other one wasn't, okay? They should have gotten together themselves and talked about it. But see, trying to pull me into the equation that have me turn against my brother. That, that was pretty bad, but I give benefit of the doubt. I give benefit of the doubt. But, you know, there are people who can come into your life for, uh, like I said, about what? Maybe six months? At first, like I said, they're very loving. They're just, oh, they love everything you do. They want to share what you do. You know what the Lord does through you, excuse me. Okay? And then, um, then it's like, wow. And they, they help you even. And then you, it's like, these, these, these are nice people. These are, you know. All the while... Never knowing anything about them. See? Like I said, only knowing that one of them had uh, relations with a cult before. That's, but that's as deep as it went. Okay? Nothing, knowing nothing about their backgrounds. Knowing nothing of either of their testimonies. My testimony you can see. Okay? My testimony is you can see. I know the testimonies of those who I trust. Okay? 
Never knowing that or hearing their testimony. Hmm. That's my bad. I, I confess that. That's I, I confess that. I should have been. So how'd you come to the Lord? How were you broken? How were you contrite? Hmm? How have you has the Lord made you a new creature? And you will find that out by when you, you ask them. And they, hey, there ain't nothing wrong with that. Someone's like, Brad, go ahead and tell me how the Lord broke you. So, okay, sit down, grab yourself a water or coffee, or let's talk about it. Sure, go ahead. I never did that. Bad mark on me. And see, those who I personally trust have shared that with me. They have all shared that with me. Everyone that uh, the seven people that I truly trust. Okay. And uh, of the ones that I truly trust, one is in uh, a, another nation and one is also in Australia. These are people, these seven people I truly trust. Because I know their testimonies. But never got their testimonies. Come in real nice and quiet too. Really quiet. Taking in information. Giving a little information, yes, and being so loving and kindly, kind and whatnot. And then, hence begins the plan or the operation, we should say. Then all of a sudden, when everything seems to be going just wonderful, they turn and bring outrageous accusations. Outrageous, silly accusations. And then they detract. like, fine, good, go away. Don't want you anyway. <laughs> go, <laughs> go. <laughs> you know, and please watch out for that short pier, okay? Please, just go away. But then, because, see, now they're putting off the facade that, oh, we're so sweet and innocent. There's something off on him. Yeah, we've seen it. Yeah. All the while, we knowing nothing about their background. But yet they're still there wanting to cause division, sow discord among brethren. Sowing discord. As a, a brother who I trust, a friend said to me, that's what Jesuits do. Yeah. Again, not everybody is a Jesuit who works for the Vatican. We have to remember that. We have to remember that. Go to Psalm 35. Go to Psalm 35. And then when they can't find anything concrete, they'll pick on some little thing, okay? Like my dear friend from Blackpool, England. He, he centered on the skin suit thing. And that... They blew that up, and that has been, I, <laughs> I disproved that, and have actually proven that those guys are actually Catholics themselves, okay? <laughs> that was, you know, that's all they had to cling to. Same here. Same here. Psalm 35, verses 9 on to verse 15. Psalm 35, verses 9 on to verse 15. And my soul shall be joyful in the Lord. It shall rejoice in his salvation. All my bones shall say, Lord, who is like unto thee, which deliverest the poor from him that is too strong for him. Yea, the poor and the needy from him that spoileth him. False witnesses did rise up. They laid to my charge things that I knew not. Yeah. Like, what? What are you talking about? <laughs> Absurd. It's like, what? They rewarded me evil for good to the spoiling of my soul. But as for me, when they were sick, my clothing was sackcloth. I humbled my soul with fasting, and my prayer returned into mine own bosom. When unfortunate situations um, were concerned about the one of the two, we literally wept. 
we wept in prayer for these people. And my prayer returned into mine own bosom. I behaved myself as though he had been my friend or brother. I bowed down heavily, heavily, as one that mourneth for his mother. But in mine adversity they rejoiced. Oh, oh but we don't hate him. Hmm. Couple of liars. And gathered themselves together. Yea, the abjects gathered themselves together against me, and I knew it not. They did tear me and cease not. Let's read verse 16. With hypocritical mockers and feasts, they gnashed upon me with their teeth. Exactly what they're doing. And exactly what they will do to you, brethren, if you are not mindful. I gotta keep I gotta stop going through this kind of stuff. It gets old after a while. Psalm Oh it was Psalm 19 it was Psalm <laughs> Well well go back to Psalm 35. Let's continue. Let's continue from verse 17, uh, 17 to verse 23. Okay? It was verse 9 and 15 in Psalm 40 we were supposed to read. <laughs> okay? So let's continue in Psalm 35. From verse 17 on to verse 23, okay? <laughs> Hope you don't mind. Psalm 35, now verse 17 on to verse 23. Lord, how long wilt thou look on? Rescue my soul from their destructions, my darling from the lions. I will give thee thanks in the great congregation. I will praise thee among much people. Let not them that are mine enemies wrongfully rejoice over me. Neither let them wink with the eye that hate me without a cause. Oh, but you don't hate me. You hate me, right? Yeah. 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 For they speak not peace, but they devise deceitful matters against them that are quiet in the land. Yea, they opened their mouth wide against me and said, Aha! Aha! Our eye hath seen it. Yeah, see? See? They, they try to find information, so they have one of those, Aha! You know, it's like, and when they can't find anything uh, rock solid because there isn't anything, okay, they'll go with whatever they can find, whatever they, it's like, okay, we can twist this. Okay, we can twist this. Okay, we can make him go on the defensive with this. See, that's what Jesuits do. That's what people who work for the Vatican do. That's what devils do with their big smiles. And they're so, they're so soft and cordial. Yeah. This thou hast seen, O Lord. Keep not silence, O Lord. Be not far from me. Stir up thyself and awake to my judgment, even unto my cause, my God and my Lord. Psalm 40. Now we will be reading verses 19 on to verse 15. Psalm 40, verses 9 on to verse 15. Psalm 40, verses 9 on to verse 15. I have preached righteousness in the great congregation. Lo, I have not refrained my lips, O Lord, thou knowest. I have not hid thy righteousness within my heart. I have declared thy faithfulness and thy salvation. I have not concealed thy loving kindness and thy truth from the great congregation. And I haven't. Withhold not thou thy tender mercies from me, O Lord. Let thy loving kindness and thy truth continually preserve me. For innumerable evils have compassed me about. Mine iniquities have taken hold upon me, so that I am not able to look up. They are more than the hairs of mine head, therefore my heart faileth me. Yeah. Why does the innumerable evils compass me about, comparing with Psalm 35? Because I let my guard down. I trusted people who I should never have trusted, who I who to this day don't know anything about their background. And those who I truly trust, I know their background. They know my background. They know me, and I know them, and I truly trust them. Be pleased, O Lord, to deliver me. O Lord, make haste to help me. Let them be ashamed and confounded together. 
that seek after my soul to destroy it. Let them be driven backward and put to shame that wish me evil. Let them be desolate for a reward of their shame that say, Aha! Aha! You know, brethren, we cannot trust everybody. And like I've said, this has bitten me now more than one time, more times than I wish it would have. This is the consequence of, to me for not getting information from people like I should have. Something tells me if I had uh, asked these people of, well, how would you come to the Lord? Something would have told me, I'm sure I would have found it's like, wait a second. When you can find out how I came to the Lord here on my channel. How he brought me to himself and broke me. <laughs> Thank you, part. But see, there are those out there who will look for anything to find an aha moment. Okay? Always constantly looking to find something to snag on people. Okay? Now, amongst true brethren, that ought not to be. Okay? But see, these people who are coadjutors who work for the Vatican, they get in to love bombing. I should have seen it. I should have seen it. Do love bombing. Should have seen it. And then after a while, they find, when they can't find anything concrete, they find little things and blow those out of proportion. They send out emails fingering you, which when people look at it, it's like, what? What? This, this don't make any sense. And while one can understand where, where they're coming from, by because you use them. Because remember, the devil can quote a lot of scripture. Okay? They can have a lot of scripture. But still, their ac the accusation is like, what? This don't make any sense. God is not the author of confusion. But see, that's, that's a bad sign, people, when you see people who are constantly looking for any kind of thing to say, so, Aha, gotcha! And their professed brethren. The consequence of, of uh, being a little bit more lax, you run into problems like I run into. From now on, anyone wants to have fellowship with myself or my wife, um, We're gonna we're we're gonna be very hesitant. We're going to be very hesitant because see infiltrators who are there just to sow discord among brethren. That's what they do. They you gotta weed these people out. When I have a problem with someone of the Church of the Living God, I leave them alone. I leave them alone if they're a brother and I have a problem with them. It's like, okay, okay. I don't trust you no more. I, I hope you're of the church of the living God. I'll give you the benefit of, doubt, of the doubt. You stay over there. I'll stay over here. I'm not going to mention you. Okay. Uh, if you bring, if, uh, if twice, okay, then okay. After that, done. Leave you, leave me alone. I'll leave you alone. I'll decide out of mine. But see these people. They want to keep stirring up the pot, scratching wounds and stuff like that, see? Proverbs. Go to the book of Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 6, verses 12, on to verse 19. A naughty person, a wicked man, walketh with a froward mouth. He winketh with his eyes. He speaketh with his feet. He teacheth with his fingers. Frowardness is in his heart. He deviseth mischief continually. He soweth discord. Therefore shall his calamity come suddenly. Suddenly shall he be broken without remedy. These six things doth the Lord hate. Yea, seven are an abomination unto him. 
a proud look, a lying tongue, and hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that deviseth wicked imaginations, feet that be swift to swift in running to mischief, a false witness that speaketh lies, and he that soweth discord among brethren. You filthy liars. You're filthy liars. You're here to sow discord among brethren. Making up lies and false accusations. It's not what someone of the church of the living God does. Who's the fakes here? You two. Go ahead and make your video what you've dis disabled the comments on. Yeah. Be aware. Um, your identity will be hid. You want to go that way? If you, if you get, if you want to push it, I'll be sure to let people know who you are. I'm on to you two. Lord has shown me. Proverbs chapter 10, verses 12 on to verse 14, and we will read verse 18. Proverbs chapter 10, verses 12 on to verse 14. Hatred stirreth up strifes, but love covereth all sins. In the lips of him that hath understanding, wisdom is found, but a rod is for the back of him that is void of understanding. Wise men lay up knowledge, but the mouth of the foolish is near destruction. Wise men layeth up knowledge, but the mouth of the foolish is near destruction. The mouth of the foolish, seeking to come in and weed out, uh, disperse the, uh, the brethren, sow discord. Okay? Verse 18. He that hideth hatred with lying lips, and he that uttereth a slander is a fool. Again. Get your, get your blood in your face going up in you. Brian Denlinger. Oh, ha! Uh, see their visage just change. Here, let me say another name. <laughs> get that blood going in your face. Brad Avenshine. Ah! Right? Yeah. Yeah. Proverbs chapter 16, verses 27 on to verse 30. <laughs> An ungodly man diggeth up evil, and in his lips there is as a burning fire. A froward man soweth strife, and a whisperer separateth chief friends. A violent man enticeth his neighbor, and leadeth him into the way that is not good. He shutteth his eyes to devise froward things. Moving his lips, he bringeth evil to pass. And finally, Proverbs chapter 23, verses 5 on to verse 9. Proverbs chapter 23, verses 5 on to verse 9. Wilt thou set thine eyes upon that which is not? For riches certainly make themselves wings. They fly away as an eagle toward heaven. Now, context is talking about riches. But will you set your eyes upon things that are not? That are things that are not, okay? Will you set your eyes, hearts, and affections on those who are not truly saved of the church of the living God, even though they were very friendly and nice and kind and loving? but turn out to be a couple of serpents? Hmm? Will you give your, uh, will you set your eyes upon that which is not in accordance with the church buildings and Christianity? Hmm? Upon your favorite teacher? 
Eat thou not the bread of him that hath an evil eye, neither desire thou his dainty meats. For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Eat and drink, saith he to thee, but his heart is not with thee. The morsel which thou hast eaten shalt thou vomit up and lose thy sweet words. Speak not in the ears of a fool, for he will despise the wisdom of thy words. Yeah. Brethren, we know that in the last days perilous times shall come. And brethren, it's not, it's not being conspiratorial or paranoid as coadjutors will want to deflect attention from the Vatican will say. It's not like that at all. This is the real. Look, the Jesuit order is for real. Okay? And the fact that the Jesuits are in control of America and that they have sent many people, they have their tentacles out in all directions, is a very real thing. It's a very real thing. And when someone, number one, is known by the Jesuits and have been threatened, then weird things start to happen. Hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> very slick. Very slick. Very slick. Very deceptive. Very deceptive. Very deceptive. <laughs> Trying to sow discord among brethren. Looking for aha moments. And making false accusations. Should have seen it. You know, my, my dear friend from Blackpool, apparently I forgot the valuable lesson that you taught me. From now on, if any of you want to have fellowship with myself or my wife, we're going to have some questions. We're not going to be so easy to give ourselves out there because I'll tell you, when you have people who betray you, from out of nowhere. Without warning. And then start going to those whom you love and trust. Trying to turn them onto you. Sowing discord. Those are, those are Jesuit tactics. Those are Jesuit tactics. I said, those who are saved of the Church of the Living God, who I have problems with, it's like, okay, fine. You, you go away. Go away. You stay over there. I'll stay here. Maybe saved, but I don't trust you. You, you go away. Okay, I ain't going to bother you. You bother me, I'll bother you back. Okay? But a man that is an heretic after the first and second admonition, reject. This is two. I'm done. If a third time comes up, I will name you. I will name you. And why don't you be so bold? And why don't you name the person who you hate the most, whom you hate even more than me? You add yourself to the number. I ain't. Tough guy. So, beware of these things, brethren. Please learn from my mistakes. Please learn from my mistakes. Don't let what happened to me and my wife happen onto you. You might be saying, well, Brad, that's because you're in front of a camera and people... Okay, but do you think that's as far as it goes? 
from the plow to the bartender, okay? Be careful. Be careful who you are going to put your trust on. And just because they come with flattery and big warm kisses and want to even help you, because remember, the Vatican has deep pockets, okay? How'd they come to the Lord? What do they personally believe about Christ rather than just agreeing with you? To this day, I, did, I still do not know, except for those whom I trust. Never got a backstory, never got a testimony. They just agreed. Yay, yay. I smell something. Uh, it's on the bottom of my shoe, and I'm wiping it off. It's going to be it for this video, brethren. Please, please, brethren, don't make the mistakes I have made. Be careful with whom you call your brother and with whom you call a friend. Please be careful. Because it hurts, man. <laughs> it hurts. It hurts. But anyway, that's going to be it for this video. It is only now 6.29 or 6.30 now, my time here. Uh, got things I got to do today, so and things don't open up until nine anyway. So, thank you for those of you who are truly of the Church of the Living God, brethren and sisters, friends. Thank you, thank you for your prayers. Thank you for those of you who help. Please keep us in your prayers. Please pray for the babes. Pray for the sick. Pray for each other. Pray for our brethren in Australia. Wow. Wow. What's the, the, what, uh, wow. What's going on over there? You know, you, you, the, what they're trying to do here, you know, they got the, the smartphone app thing here that they're trying to do. Thank you, brethren. We love you and we'll see you in the next video.